transport system is down. Best I can do is open the door you came in. Sorry. I should go back to the holding cells. Bowles wasn't too smart. He'll have left a trail. Greetings, everybody. I am Batman. But nobody calls me that. Instead, they call me Solar Scully. And welcome back to Batman Arkham Asylum. Previously on the Batman, it seems that Commissioner Jim Jam Jimmy Johns Gordon has been, well... Kidnapped by Arkham Asylum original character, Frank Bowles. That bowl-sucking bohemian is going to feel the fist of justice. As Batman. Uh, sorry, I just slipped into a bit of Christian Bale there. As the Batman hunts him down, and pretty much tracking down clues as to Gordon's whereabouts using detective mode. Yes, indeedy, another facet of the Batman, no doubt ripped off from pulp heroes such as The Shadow when... I suppose even before that, Sherlock Holmes before him. Yes, indeed, Batman ain't the world's greatest detective because of the title he got in a cereal box. No, you do detective woiks in this game as well, and uh, this is also a little something on Frank Bowles. Yeah, apart from what Joker already said it earlier on, where he apparently got Frankie out of a spot of trouble a couple of years back, uh... Well, yeah, he's basically a guy with a lot of insecurities and believes he's the best god in the world. <laughs> And, uh, just uses that to cover up his insecurities. He holds poker nights, he drinks on the job. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually, because I've worked with a guy uh, who kind of looks like Frank Falls, and it's incredibly surreal uh, to kind of see him in a game. It's, uh, strange. This is also uh, Harley's bi biography, pretty much... Oh, there is actually a bit of a discrepancy here. Like, I mean, it's gonna say that she first appeared in, a. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Batman Comics, Harley Quinn, 1999, but, uh, actually, excuse me, uh, technically her first appearance was in Batman the Animated Series, episode, uh, two, uh, I believe it was the Laughing Fish one? Oh, no, it wasn't the, um, Joker's Favor, I think. Uh, but yeah, that was technically her first appearance, 1992, thank you, come uh, no, that's the wrong Simpsons character. Whatever, the point is, is that they got it wrong, they did it by comics. Uh, which is also weird, because, like, they call, like, you know, Warden Sharp and uh, Frank Ball's Arkham Asylum 2009, so... What's going on here? Oh yes, it seems that the Joker's made a few modifications to the television. Oh uh, yeah, he's added a little Joker TV thing. But yeah, he's pretty much explaining, Teehee hoddle ha, the Batman, I have... Uh, helped Frankie. Also I'm, uh, also, I'm also showing off some uh, riddle solutions here, ahead of time, since I'm pretty much... Well, you know what, I'll get to that a little bit later, but I'm just showing you where they are for the sake of reference if you happen to be hunting for your own uh, mysterious Riddler stuff. Because the Riddler is evil, he is my arch nemesis, and anything I can do to help the public solve his riddles, I will do gladly. Uh, by the way, I believe that Bucker guy is now also a successful EDM dance artist. Uh, what was his name again? It was like Bucket Man or something? Whatever, he has like a helmet thing that looks similar to that. But he got his start in Arkham Asylum. Or so I choose to believe. But yeah, this is also pretty much the end of Tutorial Land by the time we finish off here. We've got our tutorials on boss fights, countering generic goons. All we really have left is, uh, weapon training. How to deal with goons with guns. But that'll be a little bit later. In the meantime, however, yes, it's time to do some detective work. Something that does encompass all aspects of the Batman. Uh, this isn't quite in the same vein as something like, say, L.A. Noir, where you got to be careful when traveling around. It's pretty much Batman using his futuristic computer system to scan for clues. And I miss the painfully obvious one because I'm stupid. Yet one of the many reasons why I am not the Batman. That's probably developer's face. Uh, by the way, those discarded pieces of paper that are just used as a... Uh, Random clutter SS to actually say something. I believe it says, uh, Dear Sir or Madam, uh, your spouse is in Arkham Asylum and is irrevocably insane. Uh, love, Joker, and Pals. You'll see a- it was, you'll see a slightly clearer version of it a little bit later, but what is this? Hmm, seems that Bowles had balls it up. He was a little bit drunky. And now we basically use that to scan the alcohol, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, basically one of the silliest segments of the game where Batman uses detective mode to track somebody's alcoholic breath. I don't exactly know how that works, I'm just going to say fuck it comic book logic, but at the same time though... Unless of course he's specifically isolating the contents- well, he is isolating the alcoholic contents in the thing, but... By that logic, shouldn't anything be throwing them off the scent from body odor to fucking... Whatever anybody had for lunch that day? 
I mean, even a stray fart could lure Batman off the scent completely. But then again, that's the magic of detector mode. It's pretty much ARI and it is glorious. But kind of to its cost though, because again, you can wind up spending like a vast majority of the game pretty much seeing things in blue vision as you're tracking things down, so yeah. Detective mode can be a bit of a bane, but that's probably also why they tried to sort of make detective mode a little bit yes less useful in future games where, you know, they gave goons like a jamming signals or they had certain things that were hidden from detective mode and you can only see, you know, with your eyes. And yeah, there was also a creepy little message about Joker messing with some woman who've lovely have been within Arkham. Stupid, unreliable. How did Joker get? Be quiet. What's going on? Ah 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 ah! Bee man, Mr. J doesn't want you following us just yet. <laughs> uh, while we're on the subject of Holy, though, I mean, despite the fact that you just dropped a lift shaft on us, uh, can't say I'm really a big fan of the nurse outfit. I don't know, I mean, uh, I know, I know it was probably done because, you know, oh, we're in Arkham Asylum, and Harley used to work there, as we will learn shortly. Let's do the mockery of our old profession, or possibly something that she thought would entice Mr. J? Even though I think he's got a bit of a boner for the Batman! But yeah, I don't know, uh, on the subject of Harley's, a uh, very... I, I just find the nurse outfit to be a bit tasteless. Uh, I mean, I mean, even then, I'm not... I'm not exactly either for or against the whole, you know, women as a sex object thing, or, you know, whatever that, that whole issue is. It's just more... I prefer the Jester outfit, and they never gave it to her in any Arkham game except for the... Was it the Matter of Family DLC in Arkham Knight? But that's really the only one, which is a shame, because Harley's Jester outfit is definitive. Although I think in the more recent comic books, uh, Harley sees that as like a symbol of her ties to Joker because of her whole codependency thing. Yes, it's uh, an issue we'll probably get into a little bit later, but in the meantime, however, what is this? Hmm. Seems somebody has set up a little outpost beneath the elevator. Seems they plan to elevate fear to new depths. But yeah, as we study the blueprints, they have the full layout of Arkham. I believe this is also a clue as to how you can discover a certain secret uh, that was hidden by the developers, but what that is, we shall see later. But yeah, as we look at the computer screen here, they've been watching Batman from the moment he arrived with Joker in Arkham Asylum, and they've also been taking several pictures of the Batman. I have no idea what that says. I believe it says blah blah blah, trap the bat. Uh, we will see another one of those a bit later on, so that just adds more fuel to the fire as to what is going on here, and who is behind this little lift shaft. Eh, yeah, well, we'll figure all that out a little bit later. <clears throat> but in the meantime, however, we've also got some more important things. By the way, this is also the solution to a riddle. We will be getting this one a little bit later, but we'll also be finding out who was in that little alcove later. Like the weedy little hideaway freak that they are. Yeah, well, let's see. Oh yeah, we also have to get the interview tape with Holly Quinn, which is, uh... To kind of discuss what I'm doing with the interview tapes, I'm gonna be playing them at specific intervals in the game where I play all of them. Because, I mean, again, I'll pretty much pick them up right here, but I'm not gonna be listening to them because... One of the things that the game has is that whenever there's, like, you know, dialogue going on... Uh, basically the game will interrupt it while you're listening on, so I guess they intend to either listen to them in the menu, which is what I'm going to be showing you, or it's, uh, like, they intend you to do it while you're hunting for the Riddler trophies, so, yeah. Uh, you don't have to be mad to work here, but it certainly helps. <laughs> uh, but on to a more important note, battering power! Is that any better than soul power? Like in that episode of Static Shark. Why did I make it sound like a cookie crisp commercial? I have no idea. 
But anyway, this involves us to use our grappling hook. You know, the thing that we can't attach to vents and rip them off, for some bizarre reason. And ascend the tower. But yeah, anyway, to clarify once more, uh, when it comes to interview tapes, I'll play them at certain points of the story towards the end of the video. Uh, basically at elements where I feel appropriate. Uh, that's also mainly because I also have all the files recorded, but I also need to get them onto my computer, so... Whoopsie doodle. But yeah, in the meantime, this is also pretty much uh, getting as much coverage on Frank Bowles as the game possibly can. Enjoying a wildly lost, it's a Joker's new henchman. Yep, the partnership of Joker and Bowles will be about as healthy and fruitful as uh, the Joker and Bob. You know, because he was his number one. Nye. Which is actually kind of funny, really, because, like, I mean, I, I guess part of the reason for the invention of Harley, or... And I'm speaking really in terms of the animated series, it was intended just to be a generic henchwoman, but the character just sort of took off, but it does make me wonder, actually, if we were snubbed a potential Barb in the animated series, or if he ever made an appearance anywhere other than the Tim Burton movie, where he died in that movie because Jack Nicholson thought he was hogging the spotlight, or something or other. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of Batman 89 that I do actually genuinely like, but there's also a, a vast majority of the movie, which I have to admit upon rewatch, uh, is very much just Jack Nicholson dancing around because he's the get for the movie for his perfection and playing the Joker, but in turn also the fact that, well, it's Jack Nicholson getting to do basically whatever the fuck he wants. I don't know. It's simultaneously glorious, but at the same time also, uh, makes it a very interesting film to watch, I'll say that much. But in the meantime, not just are we hunting for my arch nemesis the Riddler, but it seems we also have some other mysteries to solve. Such as this right here. I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Through my actions, I have saved this cursed city. Though my own curse is to forever remain in the shadows. My story is carved into the very soul of Arkham, and will only be revealed to those dedicated enough to discover it. Ah, uh, seems we have another mystery yet to solve for the Batman. But yes indeedy, the spirit of Arkham. Amadeus Arkham was the founder of Arkham Asylum, and on top of also having a hit song made about him called Amadeus, 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 Amadeus was crazy. Oh, Amadeus. Dr. Zeus, Dr. Zeus. Uh, okay, not of that. But yeah, the spirit of Arkham, he's pretty much... He's either the ghost of Amadeus Arkham, or he's taken up the mantle. Much like how the Batman took up the mantle of... The Batman. But yeah, it seems that he's also running around Arkham Asylum, leaving his story, and is trapped within these walls. That is very much true. The spirit of Arkham is running amok, but it seems we'll have to uncover his story. Now, uh, the spirit of Arkham stuff I'm also pretty much saving for the endgame. I am going to be getting, you know, uh, the spirit of Arkham statues where I can. You know, uh, kind of similar to Riddler trophies, really. I'm going to be getting them where I can, but I'm going to be, you know, showing off all the messages played at once towards the end of the game, because... Well, let's just say, if you can figure out who it is ahead of time, uh, you will see some amusing parallels between the present and the past, so stay tuned. But yeah, the Spirit of Arkham stuff is pretty much endgame, as is a lot of the Riddler stuff, so... Again, if you're gonna be saying, oh, but Mr. Salad is Scully, you'll miss a riddle, well, don't worry, I have accounted for that. Because much like Batman, with prep time, I have prepared for everything. So yeah, that's basically also a means of saying, basically, clean up videos at the end. By the way, nice little attention to detail. I love that, again, if you're not in stealth sections, Batman will pretty much just rip the grate off the wall because he has things to do, but again, if you're in a stealth section, he'll pretty much... He'll gently pull the grate off the wall. Which, again, is a nice attention to detail that you'll actually be seeing right here, as, uh... Yeah, these goons have guns. And they murder guards who have children. It's a way of humanizing you to the enemy, don't you see? You see, The Last of Us 2 wasn't an innovative game where they're like, Oh no, my dog, you killed him, you monster! In order to drive their point home. That was a really fucking stupid gimmick to advertise your game on, by the way. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm neither for nor against The Last of Us Part 2 for anybody on that whole little debacle, but... Jesus God, like, I mean, the whole, like, oh, enemies react realistically. If you kill their friends, they will scream in terror at their name. Uh, it's pretty much the realistic fish AI of our generation. 
Oh, even maven, but yeah, the enemies appear in red in detector mode, so uh, if they have guns, you can see who they are. And uh, of course they're red because that's what Batman sees them as. Ouchie guns are how his parents died. <laughs> Thomas and Martha Wayne. But yeah, this is pretty much our last effort in tutorial land because we basically gotta sneak up behind these enemies and take them down. Uh, by the way though, I wasn't saying that idly either because guns do hurt the Batman. Uh, they will easily clear through your health regardless of what difficulty you're playing on, so yeah, you gotta be really careful and know how to take him out. And uh, bear in mind this is before Arkham City and Arkham Knights and Demon Origins where you had varying combat options. So instead the best way to deal with him is to sneak up behind him and basically give him a taste of the bat armpit. Ooh, Batman must have been working up quite a sweat today. Uh, smell my hand, smell it. Fight me you weak livid polecat. There we go, the bat armpit of justice will smother you to sleep. There we go, with my foul-smelling odors, you have been incapacitated. One of the Batman's many superpowers, apart from money and invulnerability and overhyped internet fandom. No problem, boss. The boys are just finishing off. The Arkham chumps never stood a chance. Well, good! Our friendly neighborhood rodent is on his way. You need to set a trap. He must not leave this building. Do you understand me? Uh, yes, boss. The, the bat is as good as dead. I hope you keep your promises, boy. I'd hate to have to go and punish your family just to teach you a lesson. I can promise you, they won't be laughing. <laughs> but, Joker! Just do it and have fun. I know I will. Justice! The bat armpit silences all. By the way, I absolutely love doing that on each and every playthrough. <laughs> it's weird though, actually, I seem to recall one instance, it might be a hard mode exclusive thing actually, where uh, Joker actually points out to the guy that Batman's standing behind him, but... Uh, no, I might be misremembering that. But either way, it is a funny scene, you can do that multiple times in the game, which is fucking... Uh, again, I love little things like that. It's a, it's a sort of reactive gameplay that I'm going to be talking about when we get to the section uh, just after this large air vent that I discussed beforehand because of aging architecture. But yeah. Oh, we're right, right the right, Actually, we've got to the section right now. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty much the game, uh, you know, taking you off the leash, off the training wheels, and pretty much letting you go free into one of the game's predator sequences, as they like to call it. Uh, pretty much the gameplay good and proper when you're basically set into a room, there are many vantage points to be had, and many goons holding ouchie guns, which are the way Batman's parents died. So basically, this is Batman having to clear out a room of goons, and this is where the reactive gameplay really begins to shine in tandem with the combat system. The combat system is reliable enough to get you out of a jam if you happen to be cornered by goons, well, again, depending on whether or not they have guns, if they do have guns and they spot you, run away very quickly, because... Though Batman can fight back mano a mano, if he's cornered by a bunch of goons, then, well, he's pretty much screwed. Instead, you pretty much have to take things from the shadows to strike fear into the hearts of cruel and cowardly criminals. And yes, this is the inverted takedown. Mmm, delicious. I love stringing them up like Christmas decorations. Ah. Uh. By the way, there is also a cool thing, actually, where I think I showed this off a bit later in the commentary, but pretty much you can use... Uh, the battering to cut it down and scare the goons. But again, that's also tying into what I was talking about earlier, so I didn't go off tangent. Reactive gameplay. Again, the combat system is very simple and how you take down enemies is also very simple, but the way in which enemies react to circumstances around them is very interesting, which again, I feel is part of the reason why this combat system works so well, because again, from such simple gameplay mechanics, They've been able to add a lot of dynamics to the gameplay. Again, as you take down more goons, the goons themselves will grow from confident going, Yeah, I got guns, I can take down Batman for the boss. And again, they gradually start becoming more frightened as more of them begin to die, and they'll become jumpy, they'll become panicky. They'll start shooting their guns off at random, or eventually, as the game progresses, they'll eventually start taking out gargoyles and vantage points. And again, like, I mean, as you take out more goons, they'll be alerted to your presence, so... 
again, it escalates and challenges nicely, but at the same time, there's also a lot of reactive enemy dynamics that really make the gameplay feel interesting. And again, like, I mean, it might not sound like much, but again, there's the sort of AI stuff that really does, you know, make a video game feel much more alive, and I feel like it's because of that that, again, the game creates these unique scenarios through very natural means. I don't know, I mean, maybe it just sounds like I'm gushing at something that's, well, become a little bit commonplace in more recent years, and yes, that is also an example about how things can turn to shit on a fucking hat trick, but yeah, it's... Again, it just goes to show that very reactive and dynamic gameplay is just, you know, the beauty, the essence of video games, one might say. Input and reaction. Cause and effect, as Le Merovingian says. Damn, I missed the opportunity to string them up like Batman's Christmas decorations. And Alfred worked so hard on that Christmas turkey, it's just not the same if he's not there to eat it. But yeah, you also have many- well, okay, no, for the time being we don't have many tools at our disposal, but the game will gradually open up with more tools at Batman's arsenal to make interesting combat scenarios where you can not just use your Batarang, but also many gadgets. But I, I suppose we'll discuss that a little bit later on as we dig into the meat and potatoes of our gameplay, but this is pretty much how everything's going to be set up from a moment-to-moment -moment basis. You'll have a bit of detective work, a bit of an exploration, you'll have a bit of riddle solving to defeat my arch enemy the Riddler, and of course we'll have the Predator sequences. You might be thinking that I'll use the whole FEEL LIKE SPIDER- Why do I still have that fucking Spider-Man thing in my brain? It's a feel like the Batman. I guess maybe it's the voice that I specifically tied into Spider-Man, but uh, yeah. I, I need a new thing. A feel like the Batman? Yeah, you know what, that works, because it's old-timey and comic booky as opposed to nasally, like the Silver Age-esque Spider-Man thingy. Someday a little stop laughing at me- Damn it, I could've- I should've done that from the first fucking Spider-Man comic in the Enter Electro thing. Oh fuck, now I need to play another Spider-Man game so I can use that as a as a key to show how Peter Parker developed as a character. Oh well, next time. But uh, yes, oh a blood trail. Is Alma Wade somewhere in Arkham? Well, no. But yeah, we pretty much cleared out the rest of the stuff. Uh, there is actually... Well again, we can't really access it at this point because that's pretty much coming up in the next part slash at the end of this part, but uh... Yeah, there is a riddle I miss here that I'll be getting much later on. But uh, there are a few things you can pick up here and there. Interview tapes, riddle trophies, a souvenir to remember our time in Arkham. Yeah, we won't be listening to you for the time being, Harley. But yeah, this is also me just sort of exploring around, even though I'm forgetting how you hide something from the world's greatest detective. You stick it under his pointy nose and wait. But yeah, right at the end of this trail is also Frank Bowles, so let's stop being around the bush, I'm just doing this because I need to defeat my arch nemesis the Riddler ahead of time. But yes, and that's not getting you anywhere, Batman, stop wasting time. Why am I talking about me and the Batman as if they're two separate people? Weird. But yes, it seems that the Joker and Harley accounted for us uh, tracking down Frank Bowles, and uh, yeah, it's a dead end. Oh no, damn it, I need to get the Joker teeth. So yeah, that's the end of Frank Bowles, who looked like he just sucked a big whopping pair of them, so... Yeah. That sucks. But anyway, we can finally get all the Joker teeth and... Wait a minute, what's this? I'm receiving a communication and... Oh god. It's... It's him! Yes, it is I, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and more importantly, your intellectual superior. My genius has allowed me to easily hack into your primitive communications. <laughs> My goal is simple. You complete a series of amusingly taxing challenges and, <laughs> well, you'll see. 